private U.S. companies like SpaceX are making headline for innovation in space travel. Europe, we've got a problem. We are joined now by Josef Aschbacher, who is Director General of the European Space Agency, which has an annual budget of around 7 billion euros. What is your take? Do we have a problem in Europe? It all depends how you, how you see it. On one side, we may have a problem because uh, what you see is an enormously fast uh, development in the United States, but also in China. Uh, and there Europe really has to, to see how it compares uh, in order to literally catch up. On the other side, uh, Europe does not have a problem because on some domains, Europe is uh, world leading. I take uh, Earth observation. Uh, the Copernicus program is by far the largest Earth observation program worldwide with uh, about 350 terabytes of data being delivered to users worldwide. In Galileo, uh, we are providing a navigation signal that is the most precise signal worldwide, more precise than the GPS signal, for example, which is uh, very well known. In space science, we have missions like JUICE, like Euclid, which are among the world best. So there we do not have a problem. Actually, we are among the world leading space agency or the world leading space agency. But in other domains, uh, especially in, uh, uh, in launchers, yes, we have to catch up. Uh, also in uh, broadband internet, I take Sp Starlink as, a, as an example. Yes, there we need to catch up in order to make sure that we have what we need in Europe, our autonomy, autonomous access to space, but also autonomy in space infrastructure. For being able to catch up, does it mean you should partner more with private companies like in the US, for example? Absolutely. Uh, we are doing it already, but uh, we should do more. Uh, we have uh, launched, uh, since I became Director General of the European Space Agency almost four years ago, I have immediately started a, a program of commercialization. And today we have about 61 companies, venture capital funding uh, entities, uh, private banks, uh, angel funding uh, entities uh, with whom we are uh, teaming up. Uh, we have created what we call an ESA investor network. And they are providing uh, literally money from the, from the uh, venture capital side, from the private side to space. Uh, I take last year's uh, figures. Uh, we have uh, last year acquired about 460 million from this network of ESA Investors Network, which is about 60% of all the private funding in Europe. So yes, sir, we are getting there. It should be larger always, sir, but certainly we are on the right path. But what we really need to do, and this is a priority uh, which I see uh, really coming in Europe, we have to get more and more private funding into space in order to make sure that Europe is uh, able to catch up uh, with what happens overseas or in other parts of the world. But how should pri why should private companies invest in the European or partner with the European Space Agency? What would be the benefits from their point of view? Oh, there are many benefits. Uh, first of all, uh, space is a very fast growing sector of the economy. Today, uh, the world uh, space economy is roughly uh, about 460-480 billion uh, euros. This uh, economy is uh, growing, these are estimates from uh, consultancy companies, uh, to about 1.8 trillion uh, euros in the next decade. Um, uh, there's a bit of a variation on which year this will be reached, but certainly it's a very fast growing uh, economy. So this means that from today, for the next 10 years, uh, we see a growth in the order of 12 to 13 percent per year. There are not many sectors in the world that are growing that fast. Uh, IT is one of the fast growing sectors, but space is also among the very fast growing sectors. So from an economic point of view, yes, uh, space is very attractive because it is growing worldwide. And of course, Europe uh, has a lot to offer to participate. But space also has other dimensions. Uh, for example, if I um, invest one euro uh, in the space economy, take Earth observation as an example, the multiplier of uh, this public investment coming back into, into the economy is a multiplier of five to seven. That means one euro invested in uh, Earth observation brings five to seven euro back into the economy through new services, uh, taxes that are being paid, people are, that, that are being employed, uh, new companies that are being created, but also export opportunities that uh, services are exported outside Europe uh, to other countries in Asia, in Latin America, uh, in other parts of the world. And this is great because there it shows that our investment that we have made through the public sector, like the European Space Agency, is multiplied and is bringing more money back into the economy. But still some of your partners, like Italy, seem to rather partner with American companies like with SpaceX. What does it mean for you? 
Yeah, this is uh, first of all is one discussion that is ongoing. There's nothing signed yet, so this is a, these are ongoing discussions. But uh, I can really assure Italy and all my member states of ESA that uh, investing in European programs uh, is certainly beneficial to them uh, because uh, we have a European framework, there are European uh, partners in industry in Germany, in the UK, in, uh, uh, in uh, France, uh, but also in other new, emer new emerging uh, economies that are uh, investing in space. And we have managed uh, in the ESA framework to really increase our budgets uh, quite significantly over the last uh, years, uh, meaning that we put European programs together and staying in Europe and staying with Europe of cert is, uh, is certainly of, uh, of advantage to any country. Of course, there are always one or the other deals that are made on the side uh, with, if they happen. Uh, but this is, I would say, almost part of, uh, of daily uh, business. Uh, deals are made uh, with different partners. But for sure, by far, the largest uh, attractive investments in space are made through European programs, and especially uh, ESA and European Commission programs. But still, do these talks between Italy and SpaceX worry you? Of course they worry me. I mean, it's always, uh, always the same. If you have European programs and you see that one of your strongest partner, actually one of our founding members of the European Space Agency, is also uh, opening talks with other organizations, of course that is worrisome. But there's one message I really would like to give to all my member states, including, of course, our dear friends and partners in, in Italy, is that uh, we have uh, also, and in this particular case, the discussion on SpaceX is about joining uh, Starlink or getting Starlink type of services. Of course, we are building, first of all, a European program called Iris Square. It takes time, I do admit, this is not ready today. It will be ready from about 2030 onwards. But what we offer this year already is a precursor service called uh, govsat.com, uh, where we have uh, encrypted secure communication using geostationary satellite. That means we are already offering this service as of this year, towards the end of this year, uh, and then obviously build it up uh, gradually to include also low Earth orbiting satellites to have a similar, uh, similar constellation uh, as uh, you get uh, overseas. So yes, we are working on it. Yes, we have already precursor services that can be utilized for uh, security uh, players like uh, the defense community or other. Uh, but this uh, network is very small. In comparison oh, no, it's to not. SpaceX, it's not. For it example. is. Uh, it's not. It is uh, using geostationary satellites, uh, which are, um, of course, uh, the, the ones that are stable over a certain point uh, of uh, of our Earth. Uh, the only, I would say, disadvantage is, is the latency. That the latency is a bit higher because the distance is is larger. But these are a few um, a few microseconds, uh, so it's really very small. But yes, the service is uh, is uh, will be built up and is available as of uh, uh, towards the end of this year. And then, of course, we build it up uh, uh, towards uh, 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 an orbital system. That means uh, with uh, medium uh, Earth orbit uh, satellites, low Earth orbit satellites, which have a higher um, uh, frequency. That means a higher uh, latency or shorter latency, and therefore a shoulder time between uh, uh, data tr uh, transmissions uh, between the ground satellite and back to the ground. But still, speed is of an essence here, and it takes a lot of time, it seems, and Europe seems to be lagging behind. But speed, you don't uh, I would not fully agree, because this is a bit of a misconception. Yes, speed is of the essence for some applications. For example, for the stock market, yes, it is of the essence, because uh, I would like to have, uh, within a very short uh, time of a uh, few nanoseconds, uh, the information from Tokyo in, in London uh, or in Frankfurt uh, and uh, back again in uh, New York. So their time is of essence. But for many other applications, uh, whether these are even watching movies or these are data transmissions from one center to the other, a few milliseconds or nanoseconds of difference make no difference, and that time is not of the essence. So it really depends on the application. Uh, but as I say, we are building up the very high speed, uh, that means the very short time delay uh, application through Iris Square uh, by 2030 onwards. And as of this year, we will offer uh, something that has a slightly higher uh, delay, but uh, from geostationary orbit. So yes, Europe has the capabilities, is building it up. Uh, and yes, sir, uh, it is certainly preferential uh, for security reasons, for autonomy reasons, for strategic reasons, uh, to have uh, a network which other European partners are using as well, and therefore being part of this uh, European uh, family of, uh, of users, uh, either industrial or uh, institutional users.
Still, can you imagine partnering with SpaceX as well or with Blue Sky, for example, in certain areas? Well, we do uh, already work with our with partners internationally. We work with NASA. NASA is working with uh, some of these commercial companies. Uh, take SpaceX as an example. We have been launching some of our satellites uh, with Falcon 9 on SpaceX uh, uh, during a time when we did not have uh, a European launcher. We had uh, a, a period of about one year where Ariane 5 was uh, not flying anymore and Ariane 6 not yet on the launch pad and we have been launching with our partners in the US and it worked very well. Uh, but also let me say that the US is also using Europe uh, to launch its satellites. Uh, we have 18 satellites uh, or 18 launches uh, contracted to Amazon to launch uh, uh, satellites for the Kuiper uh, constellation. 18 is uh, a lot of uh, launches which they entrust uh, to our uh, European launcher, Ariane 6. And I think this goes always both ways. We uh, sometimes uh, work with our partners in the US and US partners work with us. So it's a really balanced, uh, very trusted, a very good partnership which we have. Still some governments cut their funding uh, uh, for the European Space Agency, like Germany as well. What does that mean for your work? Uh, Germany is not cutting the funding for the European Space Agency. The, there has been a slight uh, adjustment, but uh, the good thing is that uh, there, there, is, uh, there has been uh, payments made to Germany into the ESA Treasury, and therefore the money is available. So that means it's a, a natural variation because the call-up uh, of uh, funds from our member states is following the the way how we spend it. And there's one year when there's a little more spent and one year when there's a little less spent, but it does not mean that uh, Germany has cut their uh, budgets. The opposite, uh, Germany has uh, increased its funding at the last ministerial by about 6% compared to the uh, uh, ministerial in 2019. So Germany has increased, but also other countries have increased. But I do have a message here because other countries have increased higher and more than Germany. The average increase in 2022, at the ESA ministerial was 17% across all countries, mm -hmm. and the German increase was 6%. So you immediately see that uh, there was a less uh, strong increase of Germany as compared to, say, France or Italy. And there, I really believe that Germany, having such a strong industry, uh, space industry, uh, Mittelstand industry, uh, but also big companies, but also in, in the research uh, uh, domain, uh, Germany is uh, benefiting a lot from space investments. And this is a, a very important message I really would like to give back also to Germany. First of all, thank you for the strong investment in ESA. But secondly, this year, at, in November 25, we have the next ministerial conference, and it takes place in Germany. Uh, it is hosted in Bremen. Um, and uh, we, of course, look for, forward to Germany hosting it and uh, providing the, uh, uh, the, the facilities to, to organize the meeting. But as a host, normally you should be a very strong uh, partner and there I really uh, count on uh, Germany uh, to be the uh, engine of uh, uh, space uh, for Europe because Germany has to gain so much from uh, the investments in the European Space Agency. Josef Aschenbach, thank you for the interview. Thank you so much.